It's time. It's time. It is time for Super Bowl 54. Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers. Miami, Florida, 6.30 Eastern Time. Today, the most in-depth preview you'll get of this big day here on Beyond the Blitz. Good evening, afternoon, or morning, ladies and gentlemen. Blitz crew back at it as always. Brandon Wells, Justin Rogers, special guest today, a dear friend of mine, Andrew Moss. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good, man. Happy to be here. Thank you for bringing me on the show. Want to tell a little bit about yourself so the uh, audience knows who they're listening to? Uh, well, in terms of NFL, I'm a Patriots fan and named after Drew Bledsoe, born and raised. Kind of disappointed the way the season went, not going to lie. Before we start today, I want to do a quick memoriam for our late great number 24 LA Laker, Kobe Bryant. Mm. Very tragic. I'm sure everyone in the world knows what happened. I don't need to go on about that too much, but we here beyond the Blitz want to extend our deepest condolences to the Bryant family and everyone else that was lost in the crash. I know his daughter, a uh, coach, a pilot, a whole bunch of other people were involved. So yeah. we extend our condolences to everyone involved and affected by this crash. Yeah, prayers are definitely going out to Kobe Bryant and his family, and again, everyone that affected by the crash absolutely i think the whole sports world is shocked right now i mean yeah. we just can't do a sports podcast without talking about kobe right now and what he's meant to just so many people it's just insane to see just the world agree so much just come together and remember just this great guy that kobe really yeah. was even during the pro bowl game they're honoring him so much which was great i mean it just shows the impact that he had not only on the nba but almost every sport and hard rock stadium in miami lit up purple and yellow in memoriam of kobe bryant so super bowl nfl kind of also giving their little shout out to him as well but now moving on to regular Beyond the Blitz stuff, as always, we have our 10 headliners, as usual, for our guest today. Andrew Moss, are you ready? Let's get it. All right, number one, Philip Rivers is out of L.A. He is a Charger no more. Could Tom Brady be the answer? What do you think about this? I don't think Tom Brady goes to Los Angeles. I just don't see it happening. You see, Philip Rivers, he's probably done, not going to lie. I feel like he wants to play more, but I don't know. After the season he had, didn't do too great tom brady i think he's gonna stay in new england when it's all said and done it's there's gonna be some drama from between here and the decision but i think ultimately brady stays in new england i mean i can see brady going somewhere else but i agree with you i think he's gonna go to new england if he goes somewhere else i said this last time i think it's the colts but i'd never see him anything except for patriots colors but i mean i guess we'll see as i deemed the term last year the snoozer bowl with the patriots and rams game as we have the pro bowl every single year the annual snoozer bowl because who cares but we got to talk about it because it's nfl stars playing head to head the afc wins the pro bowl against the nfc 38 to 33 did you watch this game what you think I only saw a few highlights. I know Lamar Jackson had himself a little bit of a day. Other than that, I didn't really pay too close attention to it because it's the Pro Bowl. Something pretty interesting happening in the social media world of the NFL. A lot of NFL social media accounts were actually hacked by a group literally just to prove, hey, we if we can hack you, we can hack anybody. We're here Here's some recognition type things. So the NFL has some serious stuff to come down on. Teams affected by this event are including the NFL's Twitter account, the Arizona Cardinals Twitter account, the Buffalo Bills Instagram and Facebook accounts, the Chicago Bears Twitter account, the Cleveland Browns Twitter account, the Dallas Cowboys Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts, the Denver Broncos Twitter account, the Green Bay Packers Twitter account, the Texans, Colts, Chiefs, Giants, Eagles, 49ers, and Buccaneers Twitter account, and the Minnesota Vikings Instagram account. The hackers' names are our mind, whatever you want that to mean, but it's crazy when you see something like this happen. So what do you think about this? It just goes to show that hackers are out there. They're going to try to do anything, but seeing as they didn't really do anything besides what do they do? They just changed profile pictures and stuff like and made a post saying, hey, we did this. I mean, it's definitely going to ramp up their cybersecurity a little bit, but other than that, I don't think it's going to have too much of an effect on anything, really. It does make you think a little bit, because the 49ers are one of the teams that were listed in this event. Chiefs were as well. 
yeah, the Chiefs were actually both of the Super Bowl teams. Do you think there's anything that the hackers may have found on the private side of the accounts that could possibly come to light before the Super Bowl? I don't know, just a thought. But that is a, that's an interesting thought because like, what if there's stuff in there that we don't know about as NFL fans? Like, there's all kinds of stuff that can probably go on conversations between Twitter accounts and stuff, and we don't know about it. Moving on, Bill O'Brien has been promoted from Texans head coach to Texans general manager. What do you think about this move? That's that's an interesting one. That's definitely an interesting move to me because, I mean, what have the Texans done in recent years? They've made the playoffs, and they've just lost every single time. Don't get me wrong, Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, both great players. J.J. Watt, outstanding. Future Hall of Famer, I believe. However, Bill O'Brien, GM, is that really something you want? He finally won a playoff game after years and years of losing in the playoffs. Uh, so I, I agree with T Kim keeping him in the organization, but I'm interested to see where they go next with the head coaching spot. There's a lot of options available out there. Well, I mean, so right now, a lot of teams are going, the head coach is also the GM. So he's still the head coach yep. of the team, but he's also the GM. And a lot of teams are giving that control over who's on their team to head coaches so will this be a wave that's gonna sweep almost all the nfl i don't know a head coaching job is already so invested a general manager spot even more so that's a lot of work for one individual a head coach already has say on who and who is not on their team if a manager is going to draft someone and the coach is like i do not want this player the manager is going to listen to the coach because at the end of the day the coach is the one in charge of the team so if you're going to be a gm don't be a head coach. It's just a lot of work, and it's going to cause some really big problems, I think, inside of that situation. Everyone's favorite kind of sort of maybe not really moment in sports, this Senior Bowl, was held this past weekend. Who were the studs that stood out to you and who didn't really show up to play? Honestly, the person that stood out to me most was Joshua Kelly. Man rushed 105 yards, 15 carries, averaging 7 yards a carry. That's really impressive. I think he goes early first round. There's a lot of teams that need running backs out there. A lot there. of teams. There's yeah. a lot of teams that need running backs. And you give him the right team with the right O-line and the right system, I think this kid's going to be good. And then someone who just kind of not really did too much for me. And as a Michigan fan, it hurt to see Shea Patterson just, mm. it hurts. Mm. And there, I, I've been seeing he's projected to go undrafted. And he was supposed to be the answer for Jim Harbaugh and... Nothing happened out of it. Speaking of running backs, LaShawn McCoy says he's not going to retire yet. I don't know. We haven't seen a lot out of him. Do you think he still has any good years left in him, or is he pretty much at the end of the road? I think he's at the end of the road. I think he maybe gets one more year. He probably goes to – I say he might even re-sign with the Eagles because the Eagles have been having a lot of running back trouble. He might go back home and end his career as an Eagle. However, he only rushed for 465 yards this year, and he didn't see a carry after week 15. So – I say either he just walks away or maybe he tries to get back into Philly one last time and go with Deshaun Jackson and just ride it out there. I love the idea of him going back to Philly. That's a lot of fun. LaShawn McQuay had a lot of really good years, though, and it's kind of cool to see him maybe getting a Super Bowl ring now with the Chiefs. I think it's long overdue. He is a player that deserves it. I'd like to see him get a touchdown in this game. I don't know about you. I want to see him get the rock a couple of times in this big game coming up. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would actually make me happy because being originally from Philly, I, I keep up with the Eagles somewhat and... LaShawn well, McCoy was big for them. It would make me happy, genuinely happy to see him get a touchdown. So apparently George Kittle, the San Francisco 49ers tight end, has been playing with a torn labrum for not one, but two full seasons. I mean, why do you think players hide their injuries that just have such an impact on their game from their team managers? Well, I can speak from personal experience on this one. It's just because they just want to play. They want to do what they can for the team. They want to put out. They want to they want to provide. They want to be one of the X factors, and they want to carry, help carry their team to victory. I say I'm speaking from experience because before my senior year of high school, I tore my hamstring in workouts, didn't tell anyone about it, played an entire season in high school, played another full season here at Bridgewater. You just want to continue. You want to push through it. You think you can, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I think he might be in a lot of pain down the road, but... He's still, even with Torn Labor in the past two seasons, he's been one of, if not the most dominant tight end in the NFL, and that's very impressive to me. My thing is, the modern NFL right now is so much about player safety and how to limit injuries, and when it comes out that this really big NFL star has been playing on a really bad injury, I, don't, I think that the day that 
players hide their injuries is going to come to a close. I think the NFL is going to start making stricter regulations where they have to meet with the trainer at a certain time every day at this point, and he has to check you to see if you're healthy. Because right. we've seen this so many times. Philip Rivers has played on an ACL tear. Julio Jones has been doing it his entire career. And now we have George Kittle, who is still just one of the most physical specimens in the NFL, about to play in a Super Bowl, playing with a torn labrum. There's a lot of things like this going around the NFL, and I could very well see in the near future them really coming down on this. I can see that happening, honestly, because, as you said, player safety is number one in the NFL now, and that's respectable, especially with everything like CTE and stuff like that going around. Concussions are huge. Like, if you're even suspected to have a concussion, you go into that blue tent and you go into yep. concussion protocol, you're out of the game. Absolutely. Cleveland Browns new GM, Andrew Barry, is now the youngest GM in the NFL right now. With a team that has so much talent, has been so lackluster the last couple of years, what does he need to do at this position to make this team compete next year? I honestly think it might not have even been the GM. I think Freddie Kitchens was a big problem in Cleveland because you have Baker Mayfield who went off in his rookie year. You have Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr., not to mention Nick Chubb, who's one of the best running backs in the league. I think he was second in rushing yards. Definitely mm-hmm. top five talent, in my opinion. And yeah. the, the team is just absurd. There's no reason they should have done as bad as they did this year. I remember talking to you previously in the year at the beginning of the season, like, yeah, this team this team is going to go far in the playoffs. I see them genuinely making the AFC Championship, and then all of a sudden Odell's not the same player he was in New York, and everyone's kind of like, all right, what's the issue here? Is the play calling, or is it Odell? Is it Baker? What's going on? Odell uh, just doesn't really want to play there. Even with Jarvis on his team, because him and Jarvis have such a good relationship, it's right. kind of surprising to see him demanding a trade. Because he's been preaching how excited he was to come to Cleveland, how he's how excited he is to be back with former teammate Jarvis Landry, and then him just come out. I mean, he didn't play <laughs> bad; he's still a great player, right? And so I think Mayfield is a big problem, but I still think Mayfield is good. I think he's fine. He needs some time. They just threw too much at him at once. He's still a young quarterback. Let him work his kinks out. I think the Browns will be fine, given the right direction. Just the Browns for the last however long they've existed has had a very <laughs> tough time getting down the. Find your details of life. Right. Baker Mayfield just maybe had a sophomore slump, you know. I think he's going to come back strong next year. But apparently, they're going back to what you said about Odell demanding a trade, he was telling other teams, including the New England Patriots, that he said, come get me, to several players yeah. of several different teams, which to me is just shocking. insane. Yeah, it's, it's, it is shocking. Justin said it best. It, it's just when you have a star player like this doing that, you know, who knows? Former Chiefs star safety Eric Berry said he plans to play in 2020. Who will he play for, and what kind of impact will he have on his new potential team? See, Eric Berry, he's kind of getting up there in age, but I'm sure there's several teams out there that could use him because I've, there's talk of uh, Devin McCourty leaving New England. There's several teams out there that need a boost on defense that Eric Berry, even if it's just a little bit of a boost, people are going to respect Eric Berry because he's Eric Berry. He's going to create problems if he just goes to any other team or even if he comes back to the Chiefs next year. But as I said, he is getting up there with age and... As we saw, as we've seen over and over again, Father Time remain, remains undefeated. Who do you think he's going to go to, though, if you were to say? <sighs> Honestly, I think the Chiefs. The Chiefs? You think he's going to go back to Kansas City? I would love to see that. I would love to see it, too. But It'd be a good way to end his career, Because, as I said, he was there. Well, I mean, he's been there for, he was there for so long, came back from cancer, and continued to play. I think Kansas City owes it to him to at least let him retire there. And final headliner, uh, it's not really a question, but it's a headliner. Former Vikings defensive end and Hall of Famer Chris Dolman died this week at the age of 58. Mm. Very sad, not really a question here. I mean, just a loss of, of a great player in the league. We've seen a lot of this happen recently. And Chris Dolman, I mean, rest in peace, man. Yeah. Just rest in peace. What a Definitely great career. Prayers going out to your family as well um, and the family of Chris Dolman because it's rough. Yeah. Well, a lot of sadness, a couple of deaths, but now we, I mean, we got Super Bowl 54 on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be an exciting, an exciting time. So we got a couple of uh, 
interesting matchups, I think, that we wanted to talk about. We wanted to give you a detailed preview of what the Super Bowl is going to look like by going from position to position. How do teams match up against each other? And I think the most interesting thing here we want to look at is the tight ends. The two best tight ends of football going in head to head. But what's most interesting here is George Kittle. We just talked about he's been playing on a torn labor and he's going to play in the Super Bowl. They're not going to bench him. Right. How does he stack up against the Chiefs secondary, which has kind of stepped up as of late? It's an interesting concept because the Chiefs defense has been kind of shoddy. It's been off and on and on again because mm-hmm. they let the Texans go up on them 24 nothing in the divisional game. Titans got up on them 10 nothing in the championship game. But they step up, they figure it out. And so my prediction here is George Kittle goes off early and then the Chiefs defense will start to figure it out and they'll slow him down pretty good for the rest of the game. But then they're going to have to worry about Monster. Yeah, I think with... George Kittle, they have to put two guys on him. They have to. They yeah. can't just put a guy on him, especially like the linebackers they have. The two starting linebackers for them are Anthony Hitchens and Damian Wilson. And like those are two guys, like I've heard of them before. And they, I mean, this defense has been playing well in the postseason, but their corners and just that secondary has been super impressive with Bashad Beerling, Kendall Fuller. Daniel Sorensen, and obviously Tyron Matthew has been playing out of his mind. I'm so happy he's mm-hmm. finally in a Super Bowl yeah. after everything that happened in Arizona and then Hunt him Badger. going to Houston. Super happy for him, but yeah, they're definitely going to have to match him up with a corner or match him up with a linebacker, have a corner come over. Uh, that's going to have to happen yeah. for them to stop George Kittle, and I would say the same thing for San Francisco with Travis Kelsey because we saw what the Titans tried to do did not work at all. If the 49ers are going to win this game, they're going to have to take advantage of the Chiefs' weak points. And what's their weak point? The middle of the field on defense. you got to target that, and George Kittle is the perfect target for that. But then we have to ask ourselves, how badly is the potential absence of Tevin Coleman going to hurt this 49ers offense? We saw Monster go off when they played against the Packers, but before then... Who really was this guy? I mean, he's been fine, but he's run a whole bunch of different teams and hasn't really been known until very, very recently. Right. I think the Chiefs are going to have an answer for him to shut him down. We saw that the 49ers don't need a passing game to win a football game. But when you go against a Chiefs offense that's as high power behind Patrick Mahomes as it is, they're... uh, I got the Chiefs in this, if you can't tell what I'm thinking. I think the 49ers are going to need a miracle in order to get past this to score as many points as the Chiefs are going to. And here's what I think about that. We've seen teams that have been high-powered running offenses be shut down by defenses this year. We saw the Ravens. They got shut down by the Titans. We saw the Titans get shut down by the Chiefs. Derrick Henry did almost nothing. Part of that is because the Titans panicked in the second half. And that could happen to the 49ers. Because the 49ers, if you rely on your run game too much in the first half and then the second half it doesn't work, then you're going to rely on Jimmy Garoppolo that might not work. So if you're the 49ers right now, you have to prepare for the fourth quarter in which you have to rely on Jimmy Garoppolo. You have to do that. You cannot say, we're going to run the ball down their throats in the fourth quarter because we're going to be up by three to 10 points. That's not going to happen against this Pat Mahomes-led Chiefs offense. Like You have to prepare for Jimmy Garoppolo to take the reins in the fourth quarter. The 49ers have arguably the best defense in football this year. It's just an insane defense. And if they're going to win, they're going to have to make some surprises. They're going to have to force turnovers, make Patrick Mahomes on as physically uncomfortable as they possibly can but just listen to this Chiefs receiving court it, it's insane you have Tyreek Hill Sammy Watkins and McCole Hartman who's just been a huge factor as a rookie and then Travis Kelsey the best tight end of football right now against a very strong San Francisco secondary I think when the Kansas City offense is on the field against that San Francisco defense it is going to be some of the most exciting football we will see all season it's on the other side of the ball where the 49ers are offense and Chiefs are on defense I think this game may slow down momentum a little bit be a little sluggish but when the Chiefs are on the field and do you have stud versus stud on the other side of the line we're gonna see a field day for both sides out there yes so i think half this game is going to be holy cow and then the other half is going to be like come on pick it up what's going on uh yesterday i was watching a madden simulation of this game and like (laughs) madden simulations like they just let's make the game as close as possible but i thought this was really cool so at the very end of the game jimmy Garoppolo goes down throws the ball george kittle touchdown to end the game pretty much six seconds left right game's over McCall Harmon returns a 93 yard touchdown oh my goodness wouldn't that be awesome if McCall Harmon at the very end or whoever at the end of the game returns a touchdown 
on a kickoff return. Like, wouldn't that be awesome? Also, and it, we, it would just be like in your face NFL. We actually need kickoffs. Don't get rid of them. You know, it would just be like, I love that. That would be such a cool thing. I honestly, like you said, I think there's going to be times there's going to be at least one quarter where it's like a stalemate, no points at all. Yeah. Defenses are going to take over, but then there's going to be a point either when it's back and forth offenses mm-hmm. or 49ers are going to take over or Chiefs are going to take over. Again, I don't want to say the Chiefs are going to take over for like an entire half because it could happen because that offense is explosive. But for the Chiefs, like you have to make sure you get that run game for the 49ers down, especially in the second half. Because if they take over in that third quarter, game's over. Like there's no way you're going to stop them if they rush for over 200 yards like they did against the Packers. I don't think they're going to rush for over 200 yards. No. Tevin Coleman's injury, it's going to be huge. Raheem Oster is not going to repeat that performance. He's just no. not going to repeat that. Mm-hmm. I would be so surprised if he does. But if he does, awesome. But when you were talking about Mikael Harmon just a second ago, the first thing I thought about, Jacoby Jones, 2012 Super Bowl against the 40, against the 49ers, may I add, two, two return touchdowns in that game, including the one that blacked out the whole stadium. <laughs> I'd love to see. I mean, would it be crazy if Harvin does the same thing to the 49ers the Ravens did? I mean, so I, this is just something that came to my mind. I guess we can talk about it a little bit when we say who's going to win the game or we'll predict and everything. But I'm thinking of like low key A, X factors, and B, guys who could win the MVP of this game who we don't talk about a lot. And one guy I think of is McCall Harmon. Mm-hmm. I think he could have like a 50 plus yard receiving touchdown and a return touchdown in this game. Like, he's an X factor that I think on both special teams and on the Chiefs offense that maybe the 49ers may be overlooking a little bit on defense, but they shouldn't. I think Richard Sherman is definitely an X factor that we should be talking about a little bit more. He's been a powerhouse of a corner there, and he's the only, I guarantee you Richard Sherman will be matched up right on Tyreek Hill the entire game. Man to man, Richard Sherman versus Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill's going to burn him a couple of times. I think Richard Sherman might get a pick. My prediction is Richard Sherman gets one pick, but he gives up over 100 receiving yards to Tyreek Hill. So it's going to be a very back-and-forth battle there. That's very true. I mean, you don't get the nickname Cheetah and you're slow. Tyreek Hill is definitely going to at least have one touchdown in this game. But another X factor that I like to add in that we might not be thinking about is Debo Samuel on the 49ers. Yes. Ooh, he ooh. took Jerry Rice's rookie record this year in receiving yards. The man went off. He is very good, and I think he's kind of underlooked. And the Chiefs, he's going to be a problem for the Chiefs' defense, whose secondary just hasn't been stellar this year. I agree with a lot of that. Debo has gone very under the radar. We talk about Nicole Harmon a lot. We talk about Hollywood Brown a lot. We talk about Scary Terry, but we don't really talk about Debo Samuel, Mm -mm. who has almost been the hidden anchor for this 49ers offense all season. I mean, I think this 49ers offense changed when they acquired Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, the, no doubt. And that's why Absolutely. Debo Samuel got better because there were at least one or two guys on Emmanuel Sanders and then Debo's open. Debo's open over the middle. And so, again, these guys are going to be X-Factors. I would say the 49ers receiving core, like we were talking about the Chiefs receiving core, 49ers receiving core isn't that it's not. bad. It's not. You they don't got, get to the Super Bowl with a bad receiving core. No, Especially they, when you factor in George Kittle. George Kittle's going to open up a lot of receivers the same way Gronkowski did for the Patriots. He's the re- like Gronkowski with the Patriots is the reason receivers were open because Gronk would get doubled most of the time. I think the same way is going to be here with both Kittle and Kelsey because you're going to they're going to have to cover tight ends. That's going to open up a lot of space for receivers to get to get catches. All right, quick, open field. quick question: Pass rush. Who gets more sacks in this game? 49ers. 49ers. Absolutely. I would see that. But honestly, I can see the Chiefs maybe first three quarters having maybe one sack, no sacks. But coming in at the end of the game, getting a sack maybe to end it. I could see that from both teams. Like, their defense, I both of these defenses, I think, could last almost all game. Whichever defense can last more, I think that will be the one that wins. This is something I preached a little bit last week on Think Fast. I think that the 49ers are going to go into halftime with a lead. The 49ers start games fast. The Kansas City Chiefs end games fast. It's going to be very floppity, flippity, floppity, smibbity, woppity, whatever you want to call it. You know, <laughs> give me the Chiefs by 17 points in this game, but it's, be going, it's going to be because of a huge fourth quarter effort. We've seen Kyle Shanahan blow Super Bowl leads before. We're going to see it again. Out of the two kickers that are in this game, who would you trust more to kick a game winning 50 plus yard field goal? Ooh, I got to go with Robbie Gold. 
it's rough for me to think because like both of these kickers, I mean, they've been there for both teams. I have to, I would go with Butker on this one. I mean, Gold, he does have the more experience and I do see that, but I mean, Butker has been under pressure too. So, I mean, I could see either of these kickers. I wouldn't have a problem in saying 53 yard field goal. It's yours. We're going to win this game. And I would, but I would give it just a little bit to Bucker. Both kickers are very reliable. They'll both show up. They'll both make a couple of good field goals. I don't see any misses unless one is blocked. I like both Bucker and Gold, and that we could see a clinic in the kicking game. We definitely could. We're very good. And that's that's something that's rare to talk about is clinic and kicking. No one ever kicking's a big part of the game because field goals win games. A lot of the time, fourth quarter, but Robbie Gold and Harrison Buck are definitely two dudes I would trust. There are very few kickers in the NFL that we consistently talk about game changers. We don't talk about either one of these kickers as game changers, but maybe we should. They've both been very, very reliable this season. Robbie Gold has just been reliable his entire career. I mean, in Chicago, um, even like the run they almost made to the Super Bowl. I mean, they lost to the Packers, but he was a very reliable kicker. And then coming to San Francisco, I mean, the bad couple years they had, but he stuck on the team. Got hurt this year. I mean, they lost to the Seahawks because of their backup kicker missing that field goal, which yeah. shows how much the 49ers do rely on That's Robbie true. Gold as their kicker. Mm -hmm. So again, like you said, both these kickers, very reliable. Wouldn't be surprised if the game ended on a game-winning field goal. Clutch. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Finally, the question we've all been waiting for. Officially, who do we have winning Super Bowl 54? All right, let's give some scores, too. We're going to give some scores. Yep, we got to be right. detailed here. It's, a, it's I got, a detailed preview. I got Chiefs 35-31. Okay, close game, close game. I also have the Chiefs in this game. They're going to win this game 30-27. to 27. Lots of field goals. Give me the Chiefs, forty-five to twenty-eight. You, that's bold. That's that. That's a bold score. It's going to go into the fourth quarter, a three-point game, and the Chiefs are going to go absolutely off in the fourth quarter. You think the 49ers defense gives up forty-five points, though? I don't think the defense gives up all the points. There's going to be some defensive scoring in this game. All right, real quick for your winners, Super Bowl MVP, real quick. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to say McCall Harmon. I love him. <laughs> so we all have the Chiefs then. Yeah. We all have the Chiefs. <laughs> but, but if it's a game like you're saying, obviously it's going to be Pat Mahomes because he's going to be the reason why they win by that many points. One thing we got to talk about a little bit, though, are the Chiefs getting a little overconfident here. There's been a lot of real, That's like, true. they're bolstering. They are excited. Are they a little bit too excited? They are, like, going into this with the mindset they've already won the game. We've seen teams do this before. I'm... Could the Chiefs fall into this trap and then San Francisco just pulls off an unexpected five-touchdown victory? That's really tough because the Chiefs have been dominating teams like we've never seen them dominate before. Well, we saw it, them last year dominate teams. Right, but then, I mean, coming into... it's Especially in the biggest games. Because yeah, yeah. And, and Andy Reid. And, yeah, I think the biggest story has to be... I mean, we haven't even talked about the coaches in this game. <laughs> X-Factor coaches. X-Factor yeah. coaches. But Andy Reid, I mean, he has the experience. This is his second Super Bowl. As a feel-good story, you got to root for Andy Reid. Because I believe the 49ers will be back, if not next year, a couple years after. Like I feel like their team is built to come back to the Super Bowl. But again, I don't think the Chiefs are. I think this might be one of their one shots to win. I mean, they do have Pat Mahomes, but I would love to see Andy Reid get a ring. The Chiefs will be contenders for years to come. I love Andy Reid. I think he's a great coach. He did good things down in Philly. Made Mike Vick look like a very good player. Went to Kansas City, and he's kind of rebuilt this team. Patrick Mahomes is definitely the dude we always talk about. But this Chiefs has so many X-Factors, as we've been saying. Andy Reid is going to go in there and dominate. And we've seen Kyle Shanahan. Yes, he's smart, but he just crumbles when it matters most we've seen him playing it we've seen him coaching a super bowl before and we've seen him fail before and he's going to do it again however this could be considered a battle of choke artists because they're both kind of choke artists andy reed andy <laughs> reed's kind of choked in big moments take example a couple years ago in the divisional round they blew a 19 point lead to Mar to the mariota led titans <laughs> well if we can talk about that every single coach in the nfl is choked at some point that's true, but Andy Reid made, what was it, three or four straight NFC championships and made one Super Bowl? Yeah, but I mean, honestly, that's in the past right now. I and mean, right now, the Super Bowl is all about who is who are the two hottest teams in the NFL, and it's the 49ers and the Chiefs. Yep. Now, it has all, been all year. All that Absolutely. stuff is 
from the past is in the past. All the stuff that happened with Kyle Shanahan when he was last in the Super Bowl with the Falcons. I know Brandon would probably have a lot to say about that. But twenty-eight to three. Oh, let's not even. Nope. Let's okay. Patriots Falcons. Let's let's. <laughs> come on now. I, I don't. I don't want to have to separate you two. Word. <laughs> oh my I'm god. Just it's there. all in good fun. It's all in good. Fun. Yes, it sure. is. Okay. But like for Kyle Shanahan, like that's in the past. Andy Reid, all his stuff is in the past. This is a game. They're focusing on the game, not what's happened. But that being said, how they're both choke artists, I would love to see Andy Reid get a ring. I love Andy Reid because he's just – how do you not like Andy Reid? He's, he's been a great coach consistently. He's always had the mentality of a winner, and I respect that. He somehow made Donovan McNabb and Terrell Owens, who absolutely hated each other, he turned that offense into a chemistry that got them to a Super Bowl. Yeah. He's also very excited. He is very happy to be where he is. He likes having fun. Yeah. He built his program around, we're here to have fun, guys. Let's have some fun. He's a very enthusiastic dude. He just uh, he puts a smile on my face every time I see him in an interview. Yeah. We, we, but we have to talk about the 49ers. Nobody, and I mean nobody, would have had them as their Super Bowl pick at the beginning of the season. Kudos to the 49ers for turning a 4-12 and season into a 13-3 and first seed season. John Lynch, best GM in the NFL right now. I, right. I would say that. Oh, 100%. I remember seeing at the beginning of the season when the Chiefs, the Patriots, and the 49ers were the three undefeated teams left. There were so many memes about how the Patriots and the Chiefs were the only teams that really deserved to be undefeated. There was the... Uh, I remember the meme with the picture of the daughters from Grown Ups, if you guys remember that, mm -hmm. yeah. where, the two, where the two pretty girls were the Patriots and the Chiefs, and then the other one was the 49ers. And now look at that. They're in the Super Bowl, yeah. and no one can say that they're not a good team because they've just been consistent this entire season. If you guys have been following Beyond the Blitz, I've said constantly over this season that the 49ers, I'm not going to respect them until they play good teams and beat them. They did that consistently did. this season. Their first half of their schedule was pretty easy. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, when they were undefeated, it was a very easy schedule. Second half of the season, probably one of the most brutal schedules in the NFL, and they almost wiped the floor with almost every team they played in the second half of their schedule. Again, Kyle Shanahan did a great job with this team. If he's not coach of the year, I'm kind of going to be upset because, again, great job with the team. There have been so many times we've seen a team that hasn't made the playoffs the year before that come in and make the Super Bowl. We saw it a couple years ago with Carolina, missed the playoffs, came in 15-1, and shot the lead, went to the Super Bowl. Cam Newton became Cam Newton, and they lost eventually. And But have we ever really seen a team have the second overall pick one year and then have the number one seed and go to the Super Bowl the next? That doesn't happen. That doesn't no. just happen. No. Finally, we've talked about our Super Bowl this year. Super Bowl 54 is in the Beyond the Blitz books until we come back next week to recap it. But for now, it's time for way too early predictions. So now we're going to go through and we're going to talk about 2021. Yes, Super Bowl 55. Let's go. Who plays it and who wins it? Who is going to be the Super Bowl 55 champions? Well, I want to say the Patriots, of course, but there's only one way it gets done. That's if they bring back Brady and they get him some weapons. There were so many departures of receivers this year from New England. They were 8-0 to start the season, and then the wheels fell off the bus. It was just Julian Edelman can't do it all. Julian Edelman is a great receiver, but when he's getting doubled every play... You gotta have Nikhil Harry step up. You gotta have Philip Dorsett step up. You gotta have Matt Lacoste step up. Someone's gotta step up, and you can't have bricks for hands like we had in the wild card because our receivers couldn't catch a cold in January. However, on the NFC side, I think I can see the 49ers getting back there, honestly. I could definitely see that. In the NFC, we have a lot of things to look at. We have the Packers, who had a rookie coach, got to the second seed this year. We have the Saints, I think this is going to be their last year competing, so they have to be all or nothing this season. They have to be, because Drew Brees, if he doesn't retire this year, he's gone next year. Yeah. So Saints are all in or nothing. So they're competitors, the 49ers. They had to be competitors. They're just a good team. I think Seattle is still on the rise. Every team that made the playoffs this year, besides the Eagles, even maybe the Eagles, is going to have a chance to compete for the Super Bowl, even the Vikings. But there's another team I want to tell you to look out for. That's the Dallas Cowboys. They have a new coach. They have talent. That's true. They have a good That's defense. True. That's they true. could make it. This yeah. Dallas team is going to be scary next year. I can see it. I can definitely see that. I think with the with the NFC, I mean, like I said, any of the teams, I really want to look out for the Vikings next year. I think with Kirk Cousins, he made some strides. 
they're going to build up that defense even more than they did this year. Dalvin Cook, if he stays healthy the entire year, look out. Their receivers, they still have them. It depends who they get back and who they don't. Again, offensive line, you can build that up. But they have enough pieces right now to just make a run. I believe they can out play the Packers for that NFC North title and get a bye next year. So that's who I would pick for the NFC. On the AFC side, it's a little tricky, except not. I do not trust Lamar Jackson and the Ravens at all in the playoffs. Uh, I'm not going to trust them until he wins at least one playoff game. I would say see them going to the AFC Championship, but then losing to... I mean, I said earlier that the Chiefs might not go back next year, but I don't have to pick the Chiefs right now. The Chiefs, you know, they're hot right now. But if they get a bell cow running back in the NFL draft, they could be super dangerous in addition to having Pat yeah, Mahomes. Definitely. And then just Absolutely. if they get a linebacker too in free agency or even in the draft, because in the draft you can easily get a number one running back in the second round, especially this draft. This draft has some good running backs coming in. And if you get in the first round of the draft or in free agency a middle linebacker who can be a ball hawk for you, this team could go off. So I would have to say Vikings Chiefs. Something I want to point out that I think it's, I just find very interesting. The Baltimore Ravens. This year, almost a mirror image from the Kansas City Chiefs a year ago. You have a second-year quarterback comes in, takes the lead by surprise, takes this team over, and just dominates. And then you have a... They have some inconsistencies. They have a lot of young talent, but... They're progressing. They're progressing. This Baltimore team could be dangerous. Yes, Lamar Jackson's a question mark, but we weren't really saying the same thing about Patrick Mahomes a year ago, were we? But they're kind of in similar shoes. MVP, well, Lamar Jackson, I think it's pretty sure he's going to the MVP. If he doesn't come back and call me a fool, whatever. Yeah. But they're almost mere images of each other. Well, part of that, though, Pat Mahomes was in the game against the Patriots. His first time in the playoffs, he was in every game. Lamar Jackson was not in the game at all against the Titans. I mean, he ran for 880-plus yards, yeah. but besides that, He wasn't in the game, so he has to show me that he can be clutch in the playoffs, which I believe two or three years, we may be talking about him as one of the best, if not right now, dual threat quarterbacks in the NFL, but he has to win some playoff games to convince me otherwise. I don't think he will. I I said what I said about the Ravens, but at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to be there. They're going to get their moments, but at the end of the day, they're going to do what they did this year. They might win a playoff game, but other than that, I don't see them being the Super Bowl. And the AFC, there's just not a lot of teams competing. I think the Chiefs will be back. I think the Patriots will be contenders. If Brady stays, they'll be contenders again. Bills, I think, are on the rise. Uh, you know, Justin Bills are going to win very the very fun. Bills Mafia. The Bills, Bills, Bills Mafia. will win the AFC East. Just guaranteed <laughs> next year. They will. That's a stretch. No, it's <laughs> not. You thought it was a stretch this year, and I was all, I was this close to being right. If you could That's see fair. my figures, they're very close to one another right now. You were but very fond there, of the Bills this year. I got to give you that. There's one team none of us have mentioned yet, and that's the Tennessee Titans. Mike Vrabel, you got them to the AFC Championship this year. You, yeah. You build around Derrick Henry and get, even if you get Ryan or Ryan Tannehill, one or two more weapons, I think Mike Vrabel can take them. I Monster. think Mike Vrabel can get them. But the thing is, I think they have four players that are going to be free agents this year. Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, Logan Ryan, and then another player who's very key to that defense. So, again, for any of these teams, the offseason is critical and huge. But right now, I just don't. I can see them winning their division next year. But if the offseason plays out in a way they don't want, I mean, I, could, I don't know. I want to take your idea, Andrew. I want to take the paper. I want to crumble it up. I want to take a couple things out of it. Take the good stuff out of it. Take the paper. <laughs> throw it over my shoulder and toss it in the trash. All right. <laughs> I think. That's that's very aggressive, Brandon. Uh, but you see, if the, I, I think if they retain Tannehill and Henry, which... I don't see any reason why they shouldn't. They both showed that they deserve their contracts this year. No, the Titans definitely have a great team. Don't get me wrong. I just do not trust an AFC South team. I never will until they prove me otherwise. The Tennessee Titans, they played great this year. But the South is so inconsistent. We've been saying yeah. about Tennessee all year long. They were 9-7. and seven. Don't forget, they were 9-7. and seven. Right. That's inconsistent. That is the definition of inconsistent. The Titans have a great team, but they can't put it together. Mike Vrabel is on the rise. I love him as a coach. I just do not trust an AFC South team. One team we're not talking about that we should be talking about. One team that I think is a couple, few, minuscule steps away from being competitors. And if everything comes together, is the Denver Broncos. This is a team we need to look out for. If Drew Locke comes and he plays like he did at the last half of the year, this team still has talent on defense. They have, uh, they need to get a couple of weapons on offense still, but they have Philip Lindsay at running back. So they have talent on this team. They just need a couple things to come together. And this is the team that can compete. 
Vic Fangio is still the coach there, and I just didn't think he did that good of a job with the Broncos. I I just thought he would be a coach that would have been let go at the, at the end of the season. They didn't use Philip Lindsay at all. You said he's a weapon in the backfield, but what's the point of having a weapon if you never use it? So, and they, they do have some receivers and some weapons, and I think just like this year, the AFC wild cards will be wide open this year. Last two weeks of the season, next year is going to be the same thing as this year, wide open. And the Broncos could be a team, but right now... As it stands right now, I just don't see them as a team. But who knows? Now, how do you feel about Joe Burrow when he comes to the league? Do you think he can be an X factor to whatever team he goes to? Do you think if he goes to a team that has weapons, say the Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Bengals have both Tyler Eifert and A.J. Green, do you think Joe Burrow could boost that offense and even possibly get them a wild card berth or get them close to it or get them in the playoffs within the next few years? I'm not talking about strictly next year. But within the next few years, do you think Joe Burrow could be an X-factor on an offense if given the right weapons? Joe Burrow is absolutely going to be an X-factor on offense. I've been saying it all year. This is going to be the best quarterback out of the last five drafts. He is going to be a stud. If he is placed on the Cincinnati Bengals team with absolutely no offensive line, he will not succeed. He will be good just like Kyler Murray was this year. Kyler Murray is a good quarterback, but we never talk about him. Why? Because the team isn't good. I think Joe Burrow could very well fall into that same trap if they're not careful. However, we talked about it showing a little earlier, an idea that still excites me a little bit. New head coach down there in Carolina, they could very well trade Cam Newton to the Cincinnati Bengals, two first-round picks, trade up, and draft Joe Burrow. <laughs> I would love to see that happen. It would be exciting. Joe Burrow would be around talent, he'd be around success, and he could play out of his mind. Joe Burrow is going to be an absolute stud of an X-Factor player. I like him in Cincinnati. I would love him in black and orange. I think it would take a couple of years to really get the ball rolling like it did with Peyton Manning in Indianapolis. But this is a team that, if they would draft Joe Burrow, could completely change the franchise. If he went to the Panthers, that a NFC South would be crazy. It would be crazy. Like I think, and it, again, it just all depends on what happens with the Buccaneers. I think they could compete because at the end of the season, they look like they could compete, mm -hmm. um, especially with Bruce Arians as the coach there. But I could see the NFC South being one of the best divisions next year, as they are almost every Wait, year. We've been talking about the NFC South for years. They're always one of the most competitive divisions. Yeah. But we haven't answered the question yet, guys. Who do we have in the Super Bowl? Who's going to win it? I mean, I had my answer. Vikings yeah. Chiefs. And Vikings I, Chiefs, that's who you got? And I'm going to gonna say Chiefs will repeat if they win this year. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go Chiefs in the AFC just because there's no other AFC team at this very moment in this point in time that has impressed me enough. NFC is a little bit more complicated. I don't think the 49ers will repeat. I think they'll hit a couple of robots next season. They won't be as good. I think they may get a wild card spot. We'll see. I don't know yet. A lot of things to still to happen. <sighs> as much as this hurts me. As much as this hurts me. I got to go with the New Orleans Saints. As I said, all or nothing this season. If Drew, if Drew Brees goes back, it is his last season. Saints have already said they want to pass the torch down to Taysom Hill. Drew Brees will come back for one more year. They still have so, so much talent on that team. There's no excuse why they should have been one and done in the playoffs this year, but they were because the Vikings are their kryptonite. We've talked about that as well on this show before. I think we could see a Saints, Chiefs Super Bowl, Chiefs repeat. I would say missed pass interference calls are more of their kryptonite because you, <laughs> you saw last year the NFC Championship blatant, blatant missed pass interference and this year, maybe not as blatant, but it was pretty obvious offensive pass interference. Kyle Rudolph pushed off a little bit. Uh, however, you know, however, it, last year... I don't like that. One matchup I do like, Brady Breeze Super Bowl. Also, Brady Rogers Super Bowl. A lot of NFL fans have been wanting to see because it would be two of the best quarterbacks of all time that we haven't seen match up in the Super Bowl yet. Hot take here. I don't care who Brady is on. He's not going back to the Super Bowl. I do not think so. I don't think so either. Six reigns and done. Good, great career. He should just retire, honestly. Great yeah. career. Just leave it at that. Keep your legacy. I will agree with you on that. I was saying last year, you you know I was. I was saying, I hope he retires. I hope he walks out on the high horse like Peyton Manning did. 13-3 mm -hmm. to three game. Didn't really do much himself. Sonny Michelle had the only touchdown of the game. I think he should have rode out last year because he did basically the same thing Peyton Manning did. That's true. Ball 50. Rode the defense. Yep. He, he took home a participation trophy, got the ring. He should have rode out into the sunset. Just like Manning. But now the Patriots fan in me, now that he's came back and did not perform to what people might have expected him to do, I want him to go again, and I want him to make one last run 
want them right out into the sunset. Well, that concludes Way Too Early Predictions, and that concludes our last Beyond the Blitz episode until after the Super Bowl, so everything after this is all off-season stuff. But we have a lot of great stuff lined up for you in the future. But oh, yeah, for now, do. that's it. Blitz crew, as always, Brandon Wells, Justin Rogers, special guest today. Thank you very much for coming out. Andrew Moss, and we will be back next week, same time. And thank you very much for listening. This has been Beyond the Blitz. Beyond the Blitz.